now i would like to focus on another area so for the sustainable development we have talked about fintech we have talked about uh, technology and innovation but there are some other areas we need to address that is our green industry so regarding this green industry we have our next speaker professor neoman minik so she will be talking about the bio resource technology for supporting green industry if i talk about the professor so she was uh, she is actually the vice rector of research innovation and community development university of yarlanga indonesia she was also the adjunct professor at asia university in taiwan she work as an academic director at university of yarlanga now and she have uh, in she has involved herself in various activities and she has done many researches and for this publication she has two national patents as well so i would be happy to know about more about green industry from her so i would like to welcome professor nyoman minik thank you uh, miss beauty like your name you are beauty a woman congrats for the international women day uh, women day today my name is nyoman as already mentioned by uh, miss beauty that uh, i'm the vice rector of research for research in innovation and community development universitas erlangga i'm also a uh, advisor for uh, research center university center of excellence biomedical uh, engineering so i would like to share here Is it already clear, Miss Beauty? Yes. Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, on our behalf of Universitas Erlangga, uh, regarding to the women uh, gender equality, I think in Universitas Erlangga we have sixty percent of the leader are women. So, if you look here in the photos of my slide, we are all, I think, uh, women. We have only one. men in our uh, laboratory of proteomic laboratory in university center of excellence research center for biomolecular engineering in universitas uh, erlangga so before uh, i share regarding to the our research in uh, re, uh, based on the bioresource technology for supporting the green industry with all of women uh, there so we have only maybe two or three uh, student also men and also one a uh, lecturer uh, phd uh, junior lecturer uh, is uh, also uh, a man so i would like to introduce my uh, university uh, before starting uh, our uh, sharing presentation so today we just uh, launched the sdg center in universitas erlangga and you can see there I think more women in this uh, activity for the SDGs in our university. This is my university. Our governor also a woman. Our ministry also, okay. the dean the medical doctor
So we have floating hospital. And we also have the association World University for Community uh, Development. And it is our website of SDG Center. So I think uh, that is uh, our introduction uh, related to the SDGs in our university. So have, uh, we have SDG Center in Universitas Erlangga. So uh, related with uh, what we are uh, already also do in our laboratory for the research of uh, green technology or bioresource technology. Uh, of course, we know that green industry is a part of the sustainable industrial development. Uh, the main focus for developing a green industry is, of course, to increase uh, the efficiency of natural resources, reduce the pollution and also industrial waste. And one of we know that the renewable energy the, for the clean energy is uh, come from the biomass uh, energy. So why in this uh, sharing session, we all in uh, our uh, researcher, uh, majority is the women is also done uh, many kind of research, especially to uh, cons have conservation of our natural resources to produce the lignocellulosis, the biomass uh, acting enzyme, the important thing uh, to convert the biomass side product from the agriculture industry to be more valuable uh, material. So we know that uh, the biomass energy is more in like pyrolysis reaction or biomass, but we would like to uh, more approaching uh, by uh, using the biotechnology and uh, for that kind of the Biomass energy, we can also use uh, to the biomass uh, side product for agro-industrial agro waste to become the biofertilizer, animal feed, also biofuel. So if uh, we mentioned in Indonesia, we are a tropical country, we also uh, the agricultural uh, country, we have uh, many uh, our agriculture area or forest that uh, producing the biomass set product like uh, mainly from the like oil palm empty fruit bar, buns and also from the agriculture crop like rice straw, corn cob and any other residue and uh, also from the industrial residue from the forestry crop and residue and also household uh, waste and of course also from the animal residue. So the, this biomass source is, is a very, very uh, valuable uh, material. Because, why? Because uh, it's still a contain of uh, energy. We know that the lignocellulose is com uh, consists of the uh, two main uh, carbohydrate uh, source is hemicellulose is uh, more than 30% and also cellulose is uh, the main, uh, the main component is glucose is around uh, 44% and the rest is lignin uh, around 26 or uh, 20 and 26 percent So if we totally then uh, look for the hemicellulose with the cellulose is made based on the carbohydrate uh, risk uh, energy source. So we can uh, have like a same 75 until maybe 80 percent. This is, I think, is very valuable material from the biomass side product to convert it become the energy. If we look more detail in the uh, cell wall of the biomass or the plant, uh, we can see here that they are composing uh, the composition of the pectin cellulose and hemicellulose. You can see here in the uh, structure of the uh, cell wall. So we can then uh, uh, use this kind of the hemicellulose and cellulose become being our uh, energy source. So how to then convert it this kind of the polysaccharide? Uh, they are very different. The hemicellulose is mainly is the heteropolysaccharide and they are, can, uh, they are also composed so many kind of different sugar or monosaccharide like silen and then uh, arabinan, manan, arabinogalactan depends of the uh, biomass itself. But cellulose, we know that cellulose is homopolysaccharide. This is only content of glucose. So it's mean that 
the both of cellulose and hemicellulose is needed to degrade or convert it by uh, using the enzyme. So I think you know that enzyme is an eco-friendly uh, biocatalyst. So by using the biocatalyst engineer, engineering, we can uh, ex uh, exploring or isolate it, this kind of the enzyme from our uh, environment. So we know that the, the biomass utilization in Indonesia, especially in Indonesia, uh, the um, majority used for like pulp and paper uh, from woods, uh, for example, and also animal feed, uh, organic fertilizer, and also the uh, the leader tending. Both of this uh, kind uh, industry. I think it's better to use the biocatalyst uh, from enzyme than using the chemical uh, chemical uh, compound uh, for like bio bleaching in the pulp and paper, and also for the animal feed and also the inorganic fertilizer uh, and uh, the the leader uh, tanning. So for all of this area based on the biomass. Uh, contain uh, more in this like animal pump and organic and under leather so we can then uh, improving or developing the thermophile biomass acting enzyme or BAE. Why we use thermophile? Because the process is need a uh, higher temperature so then we uh, should uh, explore or isolate it, the thermophile enzyme. So we are uh, in Indonesia, because we are a tropical country, we are very, uh, we have so many hot springs in Indonesia. We have also volcano and uh, many hot springs uh, nearby. So we have several kind of this part of our uh, Indonesian island from like in Java Island, west and also the east of Java and also from Bali and also from the north of Sumatra and uh, also from the uh, east uh, of Java and west of Java and also central of Java. So for all of this area of the hot spring, we are very uh, interesting because we would like to isolate the lignocellulases enzyme. So it should be, uh, the hot spring should be near with the agriculture area. So why we choose a two area at uh, this time, but we would like to ex uh, expand our uh, sample to more uh, hot spring uh, beyond of the Java Island. So like in Sumatra, in Bali, and also in Kalimantan. So both of this is Java, we call it Pachat area. You can see here that they have green area near of the hot spring. And also in Gunung Pachat, Gunung Panjang is the name of the, mo the mount. Uh, Gunung is mean a, a mountain. And uh, Gunung Panjang is the name of the mountain in Bogor, West Java. You can see here the hot spring is uh, very surrounding with the plant. So uh, if we take the sample from this area, so we can get uh, the lignocellulases uh, enzyme or biomass acting enzyme uh, that have the biochemical uh, property of thermophile uh, or thermostabilities in high temperature. So for both of these, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we got uh, also the uniqueness of the enzyme properties and have the uh, good opportunity to apply or to implement it in industrial uh, area like pulp and paper for bio bleaching or bio de-inking process and also for the animal or organic fertilizer. So from East uh, Java from uh, Pachet area, we can uh, then uh, analyze the phy phylogenetic of uh, enzyme that we uh, got from this yeah, uh, endocellulase, uh, part of the hemicellulose enzyme. We got uh, the one uh, strain is uh, appear and phylogenetic is a new root. So this is uh, can be a very unique uh, enzyme inside of this uh, microorganism or bacteria. And we call it Bacillus pachet PZ01. 
So the biochemical property of this uh, enzyme is will be uh, explained uh, later. Then the next one is we also successfully isolated uh, the lignocellulotic enzyme in the Gunung Pancar Bogor, uh, West Java. And in this area, is we got um, unique new uh, the phylogenetic of bacteria that. Uh, contain of amylase, pectinase, silanase, and also lactase. So we know that lactase is not a carbohydrate acting enzyme, but it, it's very important to remove the lignin uh, contained in biomass because the lignin sometimes uh, inhibit uh, the hemicellulose and cellulose uh, acting enzyme. So we can see here uh, the group of uh, amylase, uh, silanase. You can see in the red uh, square box that this is uh, like this one. This is uh, not appear in a new root. It means that they are the same with the others, but this one is uh, in uh, another new root. So we, we got two, uh, especially uh, bacteria in uh, from this uh, area. So we can see here that we at least uh, two from the amylolytic and also lactase, and the one from the silanolytic. So we call it thermoleophoran, costophilus, and fluffy uh, thermos. So uh, how then we think that this one is unique? Because uh, we know that uh, to convert it the biomass. Uh, site uh, product from agri-industrial uh, crop, we can see that the enzyme is need not single enzyme, but this kind of the heteropolysaccharide of hemicellulose and also cellulose, they need actually from hemicellulose, they need more than one enzyme. So I thought like a cocktail, cocktail enzyme or consortium enzyme. So the uniqueness of these uh, biochemical properties is the bifunctional activity of enzyme. I think many researchers already found it, the silanase or any other hemicellulase. But the important thing, the uniqueness is they have the bifunctional uh, activity. So how we can then uh, determine or uh, qualified or verified and also validated that this one is bifunctional. We can see the endosilanase from the Bacillus pachet PC01. We can purify it and then check the subset of specificity. You can see here, we use also the commercial silent substrate, the synthetic or chromogenic substrate, and we can also use the natural biomass substrates. So from the natural biomass, we isolated the silent or the hemicellulose from the corn cobs, rice straw, oil palm, empty fruit buns, or OPAE, FPB, from the water hyacinth and also burgers. So from this kind of the substrate, you can see that the, uh, this enzyme can uh, convert it or degrade all of the polysaccharide of the hemicellulose or heteropolysaccharide and also the chromogonic substrate or synthetic substrate of the paranitrophenyl arabinose and paranitrophenyl silose. So it means uh, this enzyme can also have showing the activity with the sugar bond of arabinose uh, beside the silose itself, because uh, the silent is the main uh, main uh, component or main uh, substances in the hemicellulose. So we then put, of course, the gene that we already successfully cloned to the uh, plate uh, 31, or we call it a BS scene, purified and characterize uh, the specificity of the substrate that we then can degrade it, the commercial and natural biomass substrate, then we uh, know that this enzyme is the bifunctional that can do for the whole uh, silent, uh, silent uh, substrate for the heteropolymer or polysaccharide, and also uh, can also removing the side chain of arabinose. 
So it's mean that if we use uh, the B functional enzyme, so we will be more efficiently using the the uh, the cocktail of this enzyme. So the other B functional that we found is from uh, the hot spring of Gunung Panjang. So we found uh, both two of uh, the enzyme is arabinofuranosidase and uh, also the silosidase. Two of these uh, enzymes is uh, uh, very uh, uh, unique because uh, they have also the B functional uh, properties that you can see we uh, also can purify the enzyme, the arabinofuranosidase. Uh, and also this is arabinofuranosidase, it will be the component of Arabinan, mainly Arabinogalactan. This is the kind of other biomass, like from uh, corn corp or from the oil palm, uh, and also uh, much more like oil palm, is much more manan, and the other is much more like Arabinan, Sailan, or Arabinogalactan. So this is uh, the Arabinofuranosidase. We can see here that they, uh, this enzyme can also uh, do or degrade the heteropolysaccharide of commercial substrate. We can see the uh, arabinan there, and also the silan, and also the beech, uh, wood silan. That the arabinose is uh, is uh, the side chain or uh, this yeah the side uh, compound of this silan. But in arabinan, they are the main. Uh, backbone uh, subset or compound from arabina uh, compared to the silan. And we can see the natural substrate of uh, pit oil, pit soil, rice straw, corn cob, and also the oil palm and bagus. Uh, the arabino furanosidase also can do the activity like as uh, endosilanase. And uh, we can see also here like endosilanase from uh, Pachet hot spring, we can see here that they also can do the synthetic subset of monosaccharide arabinose with paranitrophenyl and also silos with paranitrophenyl. So from this uh, functional, we call it the arabinofranosidase also have activity as endosilanase. But the main uh, group in KZ or carbohydrate acting enzyme, this is belong to glycoside hydrolase 51, different with the prompachet. Prompachet is endo more uh, specifically in glycoside hydrolase uh, 11. So the second one, uh, we are also uh, already uh, successfully isolated the other hemicellulose from the same bacteria. We call it beta silosidase. So the beta silosidase is a uh, uh, exoenzyme. Yeah, endosilanase is endo enzyme, but the silo silosidase is exo. So they will remove one by one of the silos uh, from the backbone of the silan. So then the silos can be converted more valuable added uh, product like bioethanol by using. Uh, the silos isomerase becoming cellulose in the yeast can then convert it to bioethanol. So if we can see here that the uh, uniqueness of this uh, be functional uh, activity is silosidase uh, also have activity as endosilanase. We can see that uh, the exosilosidase can uh, not degrade the arabinan. So it means they are not like arabinofranosidase, but they can also degrade the beech wood and the natural uh, subset uh, from the heteropolysaccharide, the same like this one. But they are, uh, this enzyme cannot degrade the arabinan, the main uh, component of arabinose. And also, they prove that this enzyme also cannot uh, hydrolyze the monosaccharide of arabinose in paranitrophenol. So it means that this uh, silosidase is only the exo and endo activity uh, to degrade the silan. Uh, and that also belongs to the glycose hydrolase of uh, KZ43. 
we are already also uh, put this data and already also exist uh, in KZ group in family 51 for Arabino Furano cities. You can see this is from us, our group. Also, we are uh, already also grouping in family 43 in KZ, and this is for other uh, exo silenis, or we call it silocides uh, B and A. And one of this kind of silocides is already exploring until the structure and function. And we also put in the PDB uh, with this kind of the ID number. So the structure of this enzyme, the uniqueness, and also the different with other group uh, can be mentioned after we crystallize and also determine the 3D structure of the protein. And uh, then the last one, uh, we are also uh, isolate the cellulase enzyme because they are part of lignocellulose. We are already the hemicellulase already uh, mentioned uh, in a previous slide. And we are also doing the metagenomic analysis uh, to uh, have the other lignocellulose is cellulases. So we are collecting this from the palm oil uh, area of forest in Kalimantan. Yeah? And then we got uh, by metagenomic palm from the palm oil waste. And we can uh, see here by metagenomic analysis, we also successfully isolated the cellulases enzyme and the uniqueness of this enzyme is uh, halophile. Yes. It's not so really high for the thermos, uh, uh, the temp, uh, optimum temperature. This is only 55 or until 60, but this is uh, uh, very uh, tolerant with the uh, salt, salt tolerant. So we call it halo, uh, halo tolerant or halo field uh, enzyme. This is, I think, is will be very important to uh, uh, to use in uh, like uh, paper and pulp in the industry because sometimes they use uh, like sodium hydroxide is very basically chemical uh, substances. So then to reducing the, uh, the sodium or the pH, they can use the uh, chlorine acid and then uh, they will produce the salt. And this enzyme is, can be tolerant with the high salt. So it's mean we can uh, we don't need to uh, wash uh, the or removing the salt itself. So I think this will be more efficient in this uh, kind of this uh, cellulosis enzyme that we got from the palm oil waste by metagenomic analysis. So this is, this is a part of uh, our publication. I think we can share maybe it's other by uh, reading uh, our publication. I think this is uh, related for the structure, related for the uh, biodegradable of the uh, bioresource technology, more in like uh, palm oil waste, uh, and also uh, analysis of the structure. And uh, of course, the, uh, this also application in the corn cob and also uh, pulp and paper uh, industry. I think this is uh, my presentation because the time is very limited and Professor Alam would like me to reducing the slide. Uh, I hope that uh, my information or my uh, sharing session will be uh, continued by this discussion. So this is uh, my our student. We have also student from like Myanmar uh, and also we have uh, like uh, exchange student from like Philippines, from Malaysia, from Brunei, because our university also have a exchange program, international exchange program with our partner university in ASEAN. We are part also of ASEAN University Network. We also uh, part with uh, any other association uh, like ASAIL and also uh, we hope we have also WACD, we are also uh, very close with the uh, WASD, with the Prof. Uh, Alam, 
for many kind of the activity supporting the SDGs uh, program. So if you, uh, we can look here, we are, uh, I think more, so many women uh, uh, around us also in our university, I think. So why I'm not talking much more about uh, equality because we are, I think more than that. So I hope that women can do the best for environment. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity for Universitas Erlangga on behalf of Rector. Uh, so the, he sent uh, all of you, uh, Prof. Alam and the team, a best regard from Universitas Erlangga. Thank you very much. And I Thank send you, back Professor. to Miss Beauty. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we are very at uh, the end of this day. So please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.